short exact sequences of groups, give us a way to construct products, a way of taking one group and wanting to realize that group as a subgroup of a larger group, and another group that we want to realize as the cosets of that subgroup, and piecing them together to form that larger group. But what we've just seen is that even in some fairly basic examples, like Z mod 3 and Z mod 2, that there is more than one way, potentially, of forming such a product. One way will always be the external direct product of those groups, but another way is the semi-direct product that we used in our last video to show how the symmetric group on three symbols can actually be realized as a product of Z mod 3 with Z mod 2. In this video, let's define the semi-direct product in more generality to see how exactly it is that it does its thing. So the kinds of products that I've been thinking about in these videos are often called external products. So this will be what we define to be the external semi-direct product. And I use the word external there because I'm not assuming that Z3 and Z2 are groups that have anything to do with one another in the beginning. We want to be able to take any two random groups off the shelf and form this construction. So we're going to think of this as the external semi-direct product of A with C. We'll use this funny symbol. It's like a cross with an extra little vertical bar on it here on the right-hand side. And usually, when the context matters, and it does in this case, we'll put underneath that symbol uh, a phi, or the name of some function. We'll talk about the role that that function plays. This is the function that defines exactly the conditions under which Ricky can cross the, the masking tape line to Lucy's side of the house and mess with her stuff over there. So how does it work? Well, the external semi-direct product of A with C is going to have as its elements ordered pairs, where the first entry comes from A and the second entry comes from C. So in other words, the elements of an external semi-direct product are ordered pairs in exactly the same way as elements of an external direct product. So nothing is different at the level of elements between a direct product and a semi-direct product. What's different, therefore, if the group's structure is to be different, is the operation. So how does the operation work? If you give me two ordered pairs, A1, C1, A2, C2, and I want to form the, the product of those two ordered pairs, how will it work? Well, one way in which it could work is the way that it works in a direct product, where A1 and A2 multiply together using the operation of A, C1 and C2 multiply together using the operation of C, and that's that. So the operation here could be the same as a direct product. In other words, every direct product is also going to be a semi-direct product. So we're just trying to expand our, our thinking, expand our horizons a little bit, and introduce the possibility that something else might happen here. And the something else that might happen is that we might have a homomorphism, call it phi, from C into the automorphism group of A. In other words, a way of assigning to every element of the group C an automorphism, so an isomorphism from A to itself, and to do that in a way that respects the operations of C and the automorphism group of A. So if I take a product of two elements of C, that the automorphism that they correspond to is going to be the composition of the automorphisms associated with those two elements from C. So this is the secret sauce. This is the, uh, the court order, if you will, that tells Ricky how he can mess with Lucy's stuff on the left-hand side of the uh, comma. If this homomorphism is just the identity homomorphism, if it sends every, or, or, or I guess say the trivial homomorphism, if it sends every element of C to the identity homomorphism, uh, identity automorphism of A, then that means that this element here, A2, is getting acted on by the identity, and so this is just equal to A2 itself, and we get exactly the direct product. So the direct product is what we get when this homomorphism from C into the automorphism group of A is the trivial homomorphism. Every element of C represented by the identity automorphism of A. But if this phi is a non-trivial homomorphism from C into the automorphism group of A, then we can get something interesting. And that something interesting is defined by the C1, so this element from my first ordered pair, defining an automorphism of A that then is permitted to act on A2 when A1 is multiplying A2. So it's a bit like C1 is coming over to the, to the other side of the house and saying, all right, Instead of multiplying A2, we're going to multiply by something that might not be the same as A2. So an automorphism is acting on this A2 before it multiplies A1. And that sort of mixes together the operations uh, on both sides of this ordered pair in a way that defines a semi-direct product. 
So let's look at an explicit semi-direct product construction to wrap up this video and get you a feel for how, it, how all this stuff actually works. To get an interesting example, I'm going to have to use, instead of Z3 and Z2, let's use Z4 and Z4. So let's suppose I want to build a group that has Z4 as one of its subgroups, and which also has Z4 as uh, the cosets of that subgroup inside of B. But I want to do it in a way in which this group in the middle is not just the direct product of Z4 with Z4. How can I do a semi-direct product construction here? Well, according to the definition, what I'm going to need to do is associate to every element of C, so every one of these cosets if you like, associate with every element in C an automorphism of the group A. And A is Z mod 4 in this example. And we know what the automorphism group of Z mod 4 is. Um, it's cardinality. There is many automorphisms of Z mod 4 as there are elements of U4, the multiplicative group of units mod 4. And in fact, those groups are isomorphic. U4 is actually isomorphic to Z mod 2. So there's two elements. There's two automorphisms of A. And the way to think about why that is, is that there's two generators of Z mod 4. One is a generator, and so is three. And so there are two different ways to form an isomorphism from that group to itself. Send one to itself, that gives me the identity isomorphism, or interchange 1 with 3. And that gives me the isomorphism 5x is equal to minus x mod 4. And so my automorphism group has those two functions, the identity function and the opposite function, to play with. So to define my semi-direct product, what I need to do now is form a homomorphism from C into that automorphism group. So I need to associate to each element of C one of these two automorphisms in a way that respects the product of C. Since it has to respect the product of C, I need to send the identity of element of C to the identity element of the automorphism group of A, which is the identity automorphism of A. So 0 has to be associated with the identity automorphism. But 1, on the other hand, if I associate it with the identity element, then since 1 is a generator of Z mod 4, it means all of the elements are going to be associated to 1, uh, to the, the powers of 1, but if 1 is associated with the identity, all those powers of the identity are just going to be the identity. And in that case, my function is going to be the trivial homomorphism from C into the automorphism group of A, and I'm going to end up with just the direct product. So I want to do something interesting. And therefore, I want to associate to 1 this opposite automorphism, 5x is equal to minus x. If I do that, then since 1 is a generator of Z mod 4, that's going to dictate what I have to associate 2 and 3 with. So 2 has to be associated with the same thing, because it's equal to 1 plus 1, as the combination of this automorphism with itself. So 1 plus 1 is going to get associated with psi composed with psi. That's the opposite automorphism composed with itself. So that is going to send x to the opposite of the opposite of x. In other words, x itself. And so that composition is just going to give me the identity. And then we're going to have to associate 3 with the same thing as 1 plus 2 gets associated to which is going to be psi composed with the identity, so it's going to give you psi. So 3 is going to get associated with the uh, opposite automorphism as well. So if I choose this to be my psi, this is the way of telling each of these elements how exactly it interferes with the operation on the other side of the comma when it crosses over that masking tape line, then what does the algebra inside of this group of 16 elements now look like? We're not going to give a full accounting of what this group is up to isomorphism, but I just want to at least show one example. If I take two elements, 2, 1, and 3, 2, so two ordered pairs inside of this group B, and I want to find out what happens when I multiply those elements together in this semi-direct product. Well, the second entries, according to this definition, are just going to combine together in the usual way that they do inside of C. So my 1 and my 2 here are just going to add together mod 4 in the same way that they would just as elements of C. It's the first entries that end up doing something different. So what are they going to do? Well, 2 and 3 you're going to add together, except that the 3 is first going to get thwarted by whatever automorphism 1 is associated with. So 1 here is playing the role of my C1. So the automorphism that's associated to 1, so the automorphism on this row, if you like, that's the automorphism psi, comes in and it screws around with this 3 before the result is then added to 2. And since this automorphism is the opposite automorphism, rather than getting 2 plus 3 in this first entry, I'm going to get 2 plus the opposite of 3. 
And so when I finish all of this arithmetic, the second entry in my ordered pair is 3, but the first entry is 2 plus minus 3. That's the same as 2 plus 1 in Z mod 4, so that's going to be 3. So in my semi-direct product now, I have some intermixing between the operations that are happening in the first component and the operation happening in the second component. And that intermixing is giving me a new group structure on these ordered pairs, these 16 ordered pairs, that in particular we expect is not going to be any longer isomorphic to the direct product of Z4 with Z4. In fact, we can show that the group that we get here in the middle is now no longer even an abelian group. And therefore, it can't be isomorphic to really any direct product of cyclic groups that would make a group of order 16. So clearly, we have now a way of constructing something non-abelian out of pieces which are abelian. And that seems to be a pretty powerful tool in building up more complex groups from simpler pieces. We're going to come back to this short exact sequence construction a couple more times as we build our way towards the classification theorem for finite abelian groups. Next time we see it, we're going to be talking more about solving the quotient problem, so when the cosets here on the end are unknown, and then again when the subgroup is unknown but we knew the cosets. But this video, at least, gives us a definition of the semi-direct product, which is a general way of solving the product problem where the middle one of the groups in the short exact sequence is unknown.